On today's episode, we try to come up with a name for this channel. Phil Makes Things. W.R. Hatton and Sons Presents. Maybe we should have a naming contest and an online vote. On second thought, I don't want a channel called Tubey McTubeface or Man with Orange Napkin on His Head. I mean, then I'm committed and there's no going back. Hi, my name is Phil, and my wife Amy and I are building a Chesapeake Lightcraft teardrop camper. CLC is a company that normally makes kits for the construction of boats, canoes, and kayaks, but recently they have come out with a kit to build a teardrop camper. Since they are a bunch of stitch and glue boat builders, naturally the teardrop camper is built like a stitch and glue boat. The cabin is made of long panels. That's one of the reasons why it has those beautiful curvy lines. But it's hard to ship longer panels, so it's common to find plywood boat kits with some kind of joint to make the panels longer. But the panels in this camper also need to be strong so they can be bent into the shape of a teardrop and withstand the flexing and stress of bouncing along dirt roads. Instead of butt joints or finger joints or one of the many other ways of joining wood end to end to make longer panels out of shorter, more commonly available plywood sizes, Chesapeake Light Craft uses puzzle joints. They aren't old time traditional in boat building, but then neither is plywood, fiberglass, epoxy, and building teardrop campers that don't float and have wheels. Shorter pieces of plywood are also more convenient to ship. The large puzzle joints in the CLC kits make for very strong joints. Butt joints and bevel joints are weak and have little glue surface. The plywood is way too thin for more sophisticated overlapping joints like lap joints. Finger joints or box joints have sharp corners which act as stress risers or places where stress is concentrated especially in thin material like the plywood the camper is made out of. If you are building from the plans, then you are probably free to work from larger seats of plywood or to change the joints to your favorite type. CLC also uses puzzle joints on the bulkhead. It looks like it probably reduces a significant amount of waste for that particular piece. Before you epoxy the panels together, you need to prepare the wood. First, you must sand it. This is the last time it will be flat and easy to sand, so take the opportunity now to knock off the roughness left by the plywood manufacturer and the CNC machine and clean up any residue from the stickers. The depth of the cut of the CNC machine left little ears of wood. I tried trimming them with a utility blade and that worked reasonably well, but I found it was a bit fiddly and if your knife is not scalpel sharp it might just tear the wood, leaving a less than crisp joint in a spot that invites inspection. So whatever you use, a sharp edge and a delicate touch is called for. You also need to remove the tabs left on the panels by the CNC machine. You can easily sand them off, or you can use a rasp, or you can use a plane, or you can score them and cut them with a the utility knife. That last one, I don't recommend. I tried different methods, including different size planes, and the aggressive and the finer side of a rasp. I found that I preferred to use a small block plane, but the rasp also works really well as long as you stop when you're done and don't go any further. Stopping when I'm done has always been a bit of a problem for me. I even tried using a tiny model maker plane, which I'm happy to report worked quite well for a tool that I haven't even bothered sharpening. 
Although you glue the parts of the mold in which you build the camper together using wood glue, the puzzle joints for the panels that make up the cabin and the floor are glued together using the same epoxy resin you use for the rest of the camper. These joints are a tight fit and it's possible that you end up with a void in some spots simply because the epoxy might not flow into them. But since there's a lot of surface area and the tiny voids are probably going to fill in later when you fiberglass the outside, I wouldn't worry. I epoxied together all four of the long panels that make up the top of the camper in one go. And because I didn't have a giant workbench that could hold all of the panels spread out, I stacked them on top of each other. If you do this, you have a couple of things that might happen. You might glue them all together in a big clump. The way to solve that problem after it happens is to call CLC and have them make you some new parts, because that would be a disaster. The way to solve the problem before it happens is to put some plastic between the panels. In other projects, Mylar has worked so well I ordered a bunch of Mylar stencil plastic. You may see it crop up in other videos where I don't want stuff to stick together. As soon as the epoxy hardens, the Mylar peels right off. Another problem that might happen is you might end up with a joint that isn't quite flush. That's not a huge problem, but if the pieces are offset from each other more than the tiny thickness of the ply on the outside of the wood, you'll end up sanding into the glue layer to make the joint fair. Fair being a term in boat building that means smooth and even. I found the joints to be tight and they needed tapping with a mallet. Unless you're confident in your mallet skills, I would place a block down to help prevent denting the wood. My best advice is to try very hard to keep the joints even so you don't sand into a glue layer. The glue layer is darker and looks obvious to other woodworkers. In general, most people won't notice, but you will know and deep inside you'll feel a little disappointed in yourself. So here's the process for gluing up a two-part panel. Trim the tabs left over from the CNC machine. Sand the wood until you're happy. Don't go overboard, but this is the last time the wood will be flat. Fit the puzzle joints together and make sure they're flush. Sand any splinters and rough bits so the joints look nice and smooth. Use CA glue to tack the joints together so they don't shift while you're applying epoxy and fiberglass to the joint. Lay out fiberglass tape over the joint. Use a chip brush to fill in the fiberglass tape and soak epoxy into the joint. Lay down plastic on top of the joint so you don't glue one panel to another if you are stacking them while you let the epoxy cure. Trim the fiberglass while it's still a bit flexible. I would check after about four hours. Peel off the plastic after the epoxy is cured hard. You will need to sand the epoxy even though it will look nice and glossy if you used Mylar. Later you will be happy you sanded it while it was flat. The result is long, very strong wood panels. The combination of a relatively large glue surface in the joint and no stress risers and layers of fiberglass overlapping the joint make it surprisingly strong. Amy and I are at the point where we start cutting out doors and the hatch, but I wanted to show you how CLC solves the problems of producing long curvy panels in boats, and in this case, in a teardrop camper. Most teardrop campers have one curve that is the roof and the sides are flat and boring. Like CLC says on their website, flat-sided teardrop trailers look a bit like canned hams. Well, that's it. I think I'm done, so I should stop. I'm still working on that. I hope you enjoyed our little adventure in joinery. A joinery journey, if you will. Maybe you're building or thinking of building a teardrop camper of your own. It's actually not something that takes a huge amount of skill or a significant investment in tools. I'll be posting more videos and trying to catch up with the actual build soon. Oh, and if you have any brilliant and tasteful suggestions for what to name this channel, please leave them in the comments. Bonus points for leaving them in Esperanto.